uh, anaerobic digestion. So that's um, the process to um, where, where biogas can, can be generated from, from organic waste in an oxygen-free environment, which means that you have to have a, um, a, a seal container or a, a covered uh, pond. And um, uh, the biogas that's produced normally has a methane content of around 50 to 70 percent, depending on the the, uh, the the process parameters uh, and also the, the composition of the uh, the waste. Um, the rest normally is uh, is mostly CO2, uh, but there's also a few other things that we need to uh, to take into account, such as uh, moisture and, uh, and and the sulfur content, because. Uh, uh, that might create a problem in, in terms of um, risk of corrosion. So uh, the cleaning of the gas is, is it's an important aspect. Um, the um, uh, the product, uh, the byproduct that's generated, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, digested, uh, which um, you know, can be used as a as a fertilizer, um, but uh, really also depends on the uh, whether there is a, there is a, a need to use more that, that uh, sort of material uh, either within, within your uh, your process or uh, or whether you can sell this to a, um, uh, you know, a, a external um, a business uh, such as a farmer or you know. um, the um, the covered anaerobic legumes or, or cows and uh, that's the uh, the image you look at uh, on, on the left hand. It's a, a large covered uh, anaerobic pond uh, in a in a in an abattoir. It's uh, it's very common in in farms and in uh, meat processing uh, facilities, uh, and mostly because it, it's uh, it has a lower capital on a cost compared to uh, the gesture tanks, which is the uh, the schematic that you see on the right hand side um, it is because a, a, a lagoon is basically a hole in the ground. It um, you know, has some lining, um, uh, receives the uh, wastewater uh, stream from your process, um, sits there for a number of days. Um, you just cover it, and the the uh, methane that generates then it's uh, sort of sucked by a blower and uh, and uh, goes to a flare or can be uh, supplied directly to the, uh, the process. Uh, a digestive tank is, is much more complex. Uh, it has an, a, a number of uh, other um, components associated with that. Um, so basically, uh, the, the key thing is, is the uh, digesting digestive tank uh, and then, but there's also a, a, a pre pre-treatment stage where you're basically making sure that uh, the, uh, the material that you are uh, feeding into the tank is uh, uh, is suitable and uh, won't damage the, uh, the equipment or uh, you know uh, or affect the, uh, the the biogas production yield. So um, that's why um, if you don't have um, the materials in the right conditions, such as uh, you know the size might be too big and therefore you need to cut it you know, into pieces or uh, dilute it, you know. Um, so all those things will, will add to the, uh, the operating cost. Um, the good thing about this is that uh, you can combine uh, the, uh, uh, the waste that, uh, for example, you're generating on site, such as, uh, suppose in this example, you can have you know, manure or uh, slurry generated from a, from a farming uh, operation. Um, and those other materials would normally have a, a low uh, biogas yield. So uh, you can combine this waste with uh, other things like uh, food waste or um, uh, other you know, organic waste um, to improve the, uh, the, uh, the yield and generate uh, more biogas. Um, there's a number of studies being conducted around this and uh, you know, uh, that shows that generally when you're combining uh, uh, manure or, or, or pond grass from, from, from animals uh, with uh, food waste or crop waste, uh, the, uh, the yield improves significantly. Um, and in terms of uh, the the, um, the outputs, you can see that you know the, the biogas can be uh, can be used in, um, in in a gas engine to generate electricity, or uh, it could be uh, directly into uh, 
into a gas boiler to generate uh, steam or hot water. And uh, even more sophisticated uh, solutions such as, uh, you know, uh, feeding the biogas directly into a uh, natural gas network. But uh, this is a really more advanced solution that we've uh, started to see in, in, in Europe and uh, it's uh, not available in, in Australia. But uh, yeah, just a, a few examples of what you can do with the, uh, with the biogas. So go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, as, I, as I said in the uh, previous slide, digestion in, in tanks or, um, or uh, digestive blood reactors uh, is very considered expensive for uh, small scale applications. So we're talking about capacities up to um, 150 meters. Uh, but we've seen some better outcomes in uh, farm scale applications between 100 and 150 meters, such as uh, piglets, for example. Um, and, um, the um, uh, well, cows, as I said, are covering with the reason are, are much uh, less costly, but uh, it uh, requires a, a significant amount of space, um, and not all the processing you know, can also uh, treat the, uh, the waste water uh, with uh, in, a, in an aerobic lagoon. So those are the things that uh, um, will have to be considered as well. Um, the biogas yield um, uh, depends on, uh, apart from uh, the, the, the type of material, you know, what sort of waste you're, you're feeding into the system, uh, depends on, uh, on certain uh, process parameters such as temperature or the residence times, pH and the amount of mixing. Um, so when designing uh, the analytic adjustment process, uh, the, these parameters will have to be uh, evaluated to ensure that uh, you're getting um, you know, most of the biogas. Um, and um, in terms of the end use, uh, typical applications um, uh, using it in, in, in gas fire boilers, where you can co-fire biogas with uh, natural gas. Um, the um, the co-firing ratio can depend on the on, on the number of things. Um, Mostly uh, the, uh, the burn design, so uh, which will have some limitations in terms of uh, how much volume you can um, you can feed to the to the burner. Biogas will because it has a low uh, a lower heating value compared to uh, natural gas will require them larger volumes to supply the same amount of energy. So uh, those those things uh, uh, need to be looked at. And uh, as I said earlier. Um, the, uh, the, the sulfur content in the form of a hydrogen sulfide, uh, which can create a corrosion problems, um, would also need to be taken into account. And uh, what we've seen in the uh, in some industries is that uh, when the, um, the sulfur content is high, uh, then it would make sense to um, um, call fire biogas at low ratios in order to dilute uh, the, the sulfur with, with natural gas. And uh, this below is a, a few diagrams and photos of um, different biogas yields that can be um, uh, achieved by using different types of materials. Uh, so things like you know, cow, slow manure, uh, very, very low. Uh, but as soon as you start considering mixing that stuff with um, uh, crop or uh, food, um, Put it where it has a lower yield than, uh, or a higher yield, and things start to get better. And this is a, a photo of a biogas boiler. And when you, it's a, you burn it in, it looks like it's, uh, it's running on, 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 on biogas, but the different size and uh, it's also the, uh, the chance of uh, co firing with, with uh, natural gas. Uh, and the other most common um, technology is uh, combustion, uh, mainly uh, fiber spoilers. Uh, these are well-established material and reliable technology. 
and uh, it looks very good in, in small to medium sized applications. So um, we've seen some examples in Australia of a sport is below one megawatt of capacity. Um, there's different designs and um, uh, the, uh, the moving grade system, uh, which is I think the, uh, the one shown in the, uh, in the diagram below, uh, it's, it's more robust and will have more tolerance to uh, variations in, in fuel type. Um, so whether because you're changing the, uh, the mix of materials that you are uh, burning or whether there's some variety uh, in terms of the uh, characteristics of the um, of the biomass, such as the, the moisture content or, or um, other other properties, so um, uh, there would be a a trade off, I guess, uh, between the uh, robustness of the technology, which is it's more expensive, but it allows you to uh, handle these variations in a better way, to um, uh, probably have a much uh, a more cheaper um, boiler, which can be really efficient, but only works with a, a, a waste that has you know, a certain characteristics. And as soon as that starts to change, then you start having problems. Um, with direct combustion, uh, there's justification in pyrolysis, to, which are processes to generate uh, steam gas. Uh, these are more advanced. If we um, uh, we saw earlier in, in, the, uh, in the previous chart of um, showing the uh, level of uh, maturity. Um, they, there are a few examples and uh, you know, they look really, really well, really good, but um, uh, because it's, it's just starting, you know, the, the cost, as you said, of these technologies are, are still very high. And um, I guess that's why it's, we've been seeing uh, examples in, in large-scale applications such as uh, uh, waste management uh, type of processes. Um, and um, other mass combustors such as incinerators uh, are also well established and they're probably really, really flexible. Um, but um, um, as I explained, uh, the ease are more suitable for them for uh, um, waste management businesses where they have uh, large amounts of um, municipal waste, uh, you know, uh, can be, you know, have a, a, a wide range of different materials. So it's probably not, not really suitable for a um, for small or medium sized uh, process. Go to the next slide. So continue with direct combustion. Uh, here's a few uh, of uh, the examples that uh, we've seen in Australia. Uh, mostly large scale, but there are a few uh, uh, case studies for uh, small size applications which uh, we'll, we'll look later on. Uh, but I uh, guess uh, just wanted to mention you know, what uh, what's going on in Australia is. Um, um, with biomass and what are the, uh, the uh, best uh, things that we've seen. So I mentioned biogas early on, and uh, this is where we you know there's really large projects uh, in the uh, in the sugar mill industry where um, you generate large amounts of the material, and they can uh, burn it to uh, to generate heat and power that's used in that on the processes. So we're talking about, you know, large boilers, um, 30 megawatt capacity uh, combined with steam turbines to uh, uh, you know, use the steam to generate power. Um, with wood waste, uh, there's also several projects in the uh, paper in uh, the wood processing industry. And again, it's something that uh, uh, makes sense uh, to use the, um, the, the wood waste that the, the process is generating, using that to generate um, uh, heat and, and, and power for, uh, for you know, to power the uh, facilities. Um, agricultural waste is a few, uh, few examples with uh, different materials such as uh, micro-lamia nutshells in the case of uh, Sun Coast Gold. Uh, the burning is in a, in a 
in the boiler to generate um, steam. Um, Nestle, we got um, we use coffee waste mixed with um, with sawdust uh, in a in a large part of boiler. Australian products are uh, using the uh, the grape nut that's uh, uh, generated uh, from the uh, the pressing of the, uh, the grapes and um, um, burning it in a um, in a bonus border an egg mill with bonus border and then also um, um, generating power with um, the cogeneration unit um, and um, molten seed and grain um, to burning old husk uh, in bonus border so uh, all these applications are really large scale and, uh, and probably not 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 you know, fully applicable to a uh, uh, small or medium size, but uh, I guess it's just to show that uh, you know there are good examples of um, uh, businesses using a range of different materials uh, to generate energy. Um, municipal sort of waste and, and construction and, and industrial waste uh, that's more common to waste management facilities. Um, there's a, a, a sort of photo uh, bottom um, shows um, round bales of uh, straw being fed into a, into a shredder. And this is what I was talking before about uh, um, the, the importance to consider uh, the properties of, uh, of the material because uh, um, it's not just in, you know putting uh, these bales into a border, you probably have to uh, shred it first uh, in order to have the right size and consistency uh, 